I'll just be like, hello everyone, and then you'll be like, welcome back to my channel. Like or something like that. Okay. Like whatever you do now, Riyan. I just say hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Clearly you don't watch me. No, no, I do. I uh. just <laughs> start this not to talk to the question. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in now. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back, Josh. This is part two of answering play of questions, and part one was quite interesting. It was very interesting, I'd say. And yeah. well, clearly people have a lot more questions because not only did we get WhatsApp questions, we got YouTube comments and Instagram questions. And, and forget just students at this point. We've had parents who've seen the videos and have gone insane about the amount of questions they have. Mm -hmm. We've had group chats going on and on with questions going to not only her but her mother. People have DM me. We have so many things to discuss about. We have to get into all of that right now. Speaking of, part one of this video is actually the most viewed video on my channel. Our video has nine k views. Congratulations! And it was posted nine months ago, so that's like <laughs> incredible. It's fantastic. So thanks for that, Thank and you. let's get started. Okay. So question one. Question one: What does liberal arts mean? And we get asked this a lot as liberal arts students because apparently people don't know. So okay, so to put it straight, liberal arts is basically a new style of education that moves away from the traditional Indian approach to studies. Over here, instead of being burdened with a compulsory set of subjects that you would normally be used to in ICSE or HSE or something like that. Uh, you get to choose your own career path. You get to choose the courses you want to take, the different streams you want to be in. You can get to choose a major and a minor that uh, you can get into. And along with that, even after you choose a major, you can yet get to choose multiple different sort of classes from different majors, mm -hmm. which you would have otherwise not get, uh, gotten access to if you had something apart from liberal arts. Liberal arts is just a lot of variety, quite it's honestly. Variety. Like you have freedom to go through every yeah. co course that you could possibly imagine. Yeah, like if <coughs> studies was food, then liberal arts is basically a buffet. Wow. How <laughs> much is? Okay, there you have it. That's what liberal arts is. That's yeah. what we're studying. What courses does Flame offer? Pretty much everything. Everything. <laughs> Except for engineering, uh, yeah. it offers. I mean, it offers computer science. There's digital marketing. There's Finance and economics, maths, everything that you could possibly think yeah, of. Yeah, and, and very recently <coughs> we've also added on design. Which is a four year course now at Flame. Yes. Like earlier, I think the last time that we filmed this video, uh, it was limited to just three year courses, but now we have four year courses at Flame as well. So there have been a lot of additions to courses at Flame and they constantly keep adding more courses. Honestly, there are new ones to explore every single year. Honestly. And you can just find the most latest updates on those in the student handbook which you can get on the Flame website I'm pretty sure. So it offers pretty much everything except engineering. I yeah. can't think of another discipline it doesn't offer. Yeah. But yeah, like we said, quite liberal. Yeah, if you want the most obscure subjects, do you want pottery? Are you a person that wants pottery? Or sculpture. We have that. <laughs> we have pottery and sculpture. <laughs> like you, in, in the same semester, you can take introduction to probability, a math course, mm -hmm. and then take pottery. Along with that, you can take a final performing arts course like um, intro to visual storytelling. You can, you can think of it. We probably have it. It's uh -huh. fine. Exactly. Yeah. So, Flame offers a lot of courses in short. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the best courses offered at Flame? Okay. So now I'm solely speaking from my perspective. I'm a computer science kid, and you are a. You tell me. I know you're an ultra minor. No, I'm not. Oh, do you know? I'm no, an open minor. Open, uh, DMAC major. Uh -huh. Open minor, correct. I got that right. No, that's, yeah. That's fine. Okay, um, so in my opinion, if you want to take a course, no course is great without a great teacher. Mm -hmm. If you want a good course, I would highly recommend um, going in something like a finance because it's actually really good in Flame. Yeah. Flame's known for psychology in particular, so you might want to look out for that as well. And even with computer science right now, we have some of the brightest faculty that I've ever known. Same for DMAC. I mean, DMAC, in fact, is one of the very few developed courses in most universities. Like, it's up and coming now, but Flame actually has the most extensive DMAC resources that I've ever seen. Most universities offer media and communications, and that's not really something that you get 
very like in an extensive range but at flame you really do like i have so many i have i had a course on social media and content marketing which to me is really really interesting yeah so you know the i would say digital marketing right now because it is also very up and coming is one of the best courses that flame offers besides that like just said psychology is something that's a really good uh, course at flame and it's really well developed besides that i think people are also very into finance like uh, finance <coughs> eco would say is probably something that people do like side by side mm-hmm. if you do finance you have an eco minor if you do eco you have a finance yeah, minor yeah very popular combination yeah So yeah those are some of the best courses offered at Flame mm-hmm. moving on to very popular questions budgeting so what kind of budget does a student need for personal monthly expenses at Flame <laughs> okay so i guess start with our personal budgets yeah. i get paid like my parents give me paid. yeah yeah it's yeah. like an internship you know you get paid technically for it. youtube should start paying me very soon but my parents uh, give me a monthly allowance of 12k but 2k is for like just personal spending and 10k i is for just college expenses and what about you so it's a little more complicated for me okay so to start off um, i get a base allowance of 8k but that is solely just to go out in club hmm. like over here corn store food clubbing restaurants and all that everything in that 8k and then i get an additional unlimited budget to keep traveling back to bombay Okay. okay so those are our monthly allowances but i would say you do need quite a lot of allowance i'm not going to lie like yeah. a minimum of 5k to spend at flame Easy. because you end up spending when you're going out yeah. you end up spending just taking a cab out of campus costs you like 300 400 bucks alone to the city if you don't take the shuttle yeah. so that itself is an expense so you need money for travel you're going to go out probably eat out with friends and stuff like that besides that at the con store you just every time even if you're not spending for yourself if you accompany someone to the con store you'll end up spending yeah <laughs> she is a problem i hate going to the con store with her i don't spend money okay i literally went to the con store with her yesterday I hadn't spent money in a week. I enter juice, popcorn, something or the other always comes up. Not that I make him buy it. It just happens. It, yeah. So <laughs> I'm just saying, if you come, please come to the con store. You're gonna end up spending That's there. True. So con store, I would say have a budget for con store as well. But yeah, I mean. you can track your budget but the main areas where you would end up spending at flame is the con store um, mm-hmm. to get out of flame then you yeah. need caps uh, budget for caps within uh, campus i guess we'll hit two boards with one stone uh, talking about flame cafes most of them are expensive like quite expensive juice press is the only one that's cheap but but the best yeah the best Fair. It, it is the best and is yeah. the cheapest. Uh, every other cafe on campus is pretty damn expensive. So like, it starts at a minimum. Mm-hmm. Like coffee, the this size coffee is like one sixty bucks. So you know you, you do need quite a lot of budget for cafes as well, and you will end up probably eating a lot at Flame cafes. There's one literally every major area of mm-hmm. campus. Except South, that's just your problem. Yeah, I mean, we don't talk about yeah. that. I would say budgeting. I minimum allowance I think should be five thousand. You will end up spending that much. And from what I've talked to with other people on campus as well, other friends, they even I think they think that five k is a very suitable ballpark. But I would say keep it a little flexible. You might end up overspending or you know just needing more. But yeah, five k I think is a good baseline. Five k is good. Yeah. Uh, but again, one more thing to confirm. Okay. If you go clubbing, thousand bucks per night. Take it from me. I wouldn't know. Next question is about laundry. So laundry, uh, we've covered this in a previous video, but just to basically outline it, we have two laundry services on campus. One is the main laundromat, and one is individual laundry in each housing. <laughs> The main laundromat is free. Like you, uh, it has a forty clothes per month limit. More than enough. Yeah, which honestly you don't end up needing that much. And if you do, then I think there's an additional fifteen bucks a piece charge or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. I'm not too sure, yeah. but forty clothes is enough honestly for a month. And then if you end up using the paid a lot of laundry services in your block, 
then that's 150 i think a coupon 150 a coupon one coupon gives you one load one load yeah. and one load is basically just whatever you can fit into one load yeah whatever goes into the machine is what they consider one load uh, if you have more clothes then you can buy for two loads and you're sorted yeah. so yeah 150 is the coupon rate for the paid laundry and free is free as long as it's under 40. <laughs> Okay. Next so, question is basically talking about how to get around campus internally. So, as of like October last year, we got started with two internal campus going around systems. One are the flame cycles, which Josh is a huge advocate for. Yes. And then we have the internal shuttles, so cycles. Okay. So, to put it straight, if you live, okay, or if you do happen to attend flame and get north, east, or west, you're gonna be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so essentially what happens is that we have cycles that go and get parked at certain bike stands around campus. 90% of them land up in North because North is closest to the gate. Or the mess. Because everyone cycles to the mess. Yeah, but the, the, the second it comes back, it gets taken away because like someone will be able to use it. Fair yeah. So you'll find like 20, 30 cycles outside North, a couple of them all around campus. None in south. South mm -hmm. is a pain. South, Do not go to south. Because we had the south slope, which was a yeah. huge barrier but to cycling there. It. Still, people don't want to cycle yeah. there. But yeah, yeah. so there's uh, cycles that can really get you around campus yeah. uh, and great workout. So there you yeah. go. Besides that, they started the flame shuttle. Though the flame shuttle is sometimes not there. Like it's supposed to operate on a 30 minute system. Every 30 minutes it's supposed More to go like around. 30 hour basis. <laughs> we, it's literally on your luck. If you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. I've barely seen it. But it, it when it operates, it operates. Hmm. But yeah, it's ideally supposed to be every 30 minutes. Uh, so like 11 o'clock, then 11.30, then 12. Uh, there will be a shuttle that covers all the main areas so it will mm. start at the main gate, go to north housing, go to the plaza, then go to west, then go to Chandu, then go the back gate. to the gate. So it covers the entire road, the ring road, yeah. the ring road yeah. uh, and it mm. can pick you up at any point, drop you off at any point, there's no certain drop or pick up point. And yeah, it's pretty convenient for when you can catch it. Hmm. But yeah, these are the two internal traveling systems within Flame. Outside of Flame, you have the shuttle which we discussed in the other video. So travel at Flame. Oh, I screenshot Instagram time. <laughs> Everybody wants to know about MBA at Flame. So, um... You did not hear this from us. Do a bachelor's and leave. See, hey! There is MBA at Flame, nobody just does it. It's just, uh, it's not the best. See, Flame is still very up and coming. They've only recently started getting traction. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing MBA at Flame. I, I don't even know what program exactly they offer. But yeah, we're just doing an undergraduate and leaving, which See, is what we'd recommend. Yeah, I think Flame got <laughs> popular in like the undergraduate category. Mm -hmm. People know Flame for its undergraduate programs and like the amazing course structure that they have. Great place for undergraduate, I would fully recommend. Postgraduate, MBAs, whatnot, think. Yeah. There are multiple better options out there. On the contrary, Flame being a newer university means that there's going to be some sort of lacking when it comes to a master's. Mm -hmm. So think, if it works out for you, nothing like it. But we wouldn't recommend. Yeah, personally, like I've had DMs asking me about this a billion times on YouTube comments, and I, I don't respond to this because we wouldn't recommend MBA yeah. at Flame. It's as simple as that. But under graduation, yes, definitely go for it. Very important question. Hear this out. Okay. Does Flame have a good economic cell and does it facilitate startups? Because someone wants to become an entrepreneur, and to what extent can Flame help? Yeah. Okay, so to start off, uh, we have an entrepreneurship lab mm -hmm. and we also have a couple of these professors that actually help us in kind of building up our startups. So if you have an idea and if it actually works out, this year itself we had an entire fair where people would go and present their startup ideas and based on how good they are, there's this one professor that actually helped in their funding process. So if you actually have a good idea, you can pitch it to a professor. We have entrepreneurship courses itself in Flame. 
on the contrary the way we met was through an <laughs> entrepreneurship course yeah yeah and it's a great way i i would fully support entrepreneurship in film and because the way they help you kind of sustain while at the same time grow your uh startup into like a much bigger thing from what it was when it is in film it's a great help to just get professors on board when you're doing this so i would fully support that film mm mm-hmm. can you let us know about the admission process what extra curriculars do you put in your feet exam basically just the entire admission process so let's get into that because there are too many questions about the feet it's so simple on the year like flame tells you read andhe bachche read okay <laughs> whoa okay <laughs> To break it down for you, the flame admission process consists of the feed, the essay, and your interview. Okay. And now, if you don't give the feed, which is the flame E, what's the E for? Uh, flame, flame entrance entrance aptitude test. test. Yeah, Correct. something like that. Something like that. If you don't want to give the flame entrance test, then you end up submitting your SAT score if yeah. you've given the SAT. Otherwise, you take the feed. The feed is a two-hour exam. Uh, In our time, it was an online exam. Now, I it's mean, it's, it, no, it is no, it online. is online. But an offline option is given, I think, if I'm not wrong. I don't know, but yeah, I'm not sure. It was very different from when we took it. Is what I'm trying yeah. to say. But yeah, so the feat is a two-hour paper. It's a proctored exam, and you end up like it's it's got uh, math, GK, English, and. Uh, <laughs> हार्डर क्वेश्चन math i would say they ask between 8th to 12th grade math and they focus a lot on things like ratio proportion average probability very like stuff that you would actually use in the real exactly. world not quadratic equations english is pretty straight forward i wouldn't say english is very hard in the flame aptitude test uh moving on what else logic i would say logic you're going to struggle with if you haven't done it in 11th and 12th like i did uh, yeah. hsc and it was a compulsion for me in humanities to study logic in 11th and 12th and that really helped me on my flame aptitude test uh so if you haven't done logic before i would say pay attention to it because it does make you think a lot and you'll end up wasting a lot of time on your paper if you don't have sufficient knowledge on it uh but yeah it's a pretty chill exam honestly you have more than enough time to complete it so the on the spot essay is a 200 250 word thing uh and obviously you get a uh, topic on the spot and then you have i think it was 20 minutes to write it whatever it is like something it's, it's like something that you write in a specific amount of time yeah it's it somewhere is. 10 to 20 read minutes read bachche andhe bachche what read. is with you yeah you have to do it in that amount of time and again it's not stressful it's really pretty chill and the topics are also usually very opinion based like they'll give you some headline and they'll ask you for your opinion on it i will say those stick to your opinion like once you've established and a stance on what the topic is don't try to like weigh in on the other side of the topic or whatever just give your opinion have it be your final say i don't remember what my essay topic was but from like the more recent ones that my friends gave there were to- there were topics like english is a universal language your thoughts or indian culture has evolved in the last 5 years your thoughts so there are stuff like that where they genuinely want to get to know your yeah. opinion and see see all these philosophical things and what not she got you know what my question was what was the most memorable advertisement you've seen fair so expect the unexpected so yeah they ask a lot of but again it's like an opinion thing or you give something that will really get you thinking yeah. so yeah the essay is pretty chill honestly there's no need to stress about it moving on to your interview now the interview is completely different from the way yeah. we gave it we gave it in a online sense where we had to record our answers and send it in now it's a zoom call with someone yeah. sitting in front of you so much better now conversation and uh, the questions that you generally get asked are about yourself like my interview people they asked me like three traits about myself <laughs> or my views on 
COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic and mental health during the pandemic and stuff like that. Uh, whereas like my sister gave her interview and her question. So now it's more of a conversation because there's someone actually sitting in front of you. So like they asked her where she's from. She said Mumbai and then they were like, oh, so can you tell me three best places to visit in Mumbai? And then she, yeah, so then, so basically they pick up off of things that you say in the interview about yourself and then they'll ask you follow-ups on those mm-hmm. that's the interview process right now so i would say just try and be as creative with your answer as possible but at the same time they really want to just get to know you yeah. so be authentic don't try to give very textbook answers of why you think you are the perfect fit for flame university or you know those expected answers that you're trying to impress them yeah. they just want to have a conversation and get to know your thinking so just put it straight you be nice to them in the interview they're going to be nice to you in your selection process they might even give you a scholarship fair enough also uh, a lot of questions were about the sop uh, the flame sop firstly people keep asking me i don't think there's a word limit to the sop um just again uh, how many extra curriculars you should list in your sop is something i get asked a lot list as many as you can literally literally list everything you've ever done in your life my entire life story went into it exactly just if even if you think it's ir- irrelevant to you they might appreciate it so just put down anything and everything that you're proud of or that you've done that you think is worth worth mentioning if you won awards mention all the awards just do whatever you've done just put it down on that piece of paper and submit yeah. it and extra curricular same thing for that just put down every volunteer work that you've done or if you've just done an internship somewhere list everything that you can think of it really j- does add a lot of value and just is getting bored i'm just tired yeah it's like 12 o'clock in the night right this now the commitment we have to this youtube yeah. video because i have a 101 degree fever this match has got done with a 2 hour meeting and we're doing this at 1am so yes. it's because we love you guys <laughs> yeah just list everything that you can think of on your statement of purpose and again i don't think there's a word limit so you can write as much as you want what is the best housing and when to select and pay for it south housing is the best housing <laughs> excuse me for okay. girls because we don't get north okay let's make the distinction clear oh. north is fancy yeah. south is big but far also very dusty See? also construction site Also just bad. Um west is non AC and common bathroom so would probably whatever you want I'm not going to comment on that. And east is small rooms with AC so if you're getting AC do not take east it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. but so south and north are the fanciest housings on campus. Yeah. They are the if you're asking me for the best they are the best. uh boys usually get north housing girls usually get south uh, uh, boys also get uh, south but boys in the graduating batch will get north yeah so he's got in north yes. that's the gist of this whole thing yes. i'm in south but yeah those are the best uh, housings on campus in terms of when you should apply for the rooms and everything i would say as quickly as possible select your housing if you want ac rooms particularly you need to apply literally right off the bat as soon as the forms come out now they actually have a really good system like i don't know if you saw the mail no. but they sent out a mail to the next next year's batches saying that you can now there are deadlines to forms like there's going to be a form i think coming out in the next week uh that gives the students on campus a chance to select their next year housing already from now itself and then there will be a consecutive form i think a month later where you can specify what type of housing i think my sister has already filled her roommate application for next year so they have really cleared that up so you have these dates when certain forms come out so i would say stay on top of that fill them out as quickly as they come out and then you should be sorted So for AC rooms, really get a head start. Get a head start. Yeah. As soon as forms start rolling in, just fill them out and send them in. That's the quickest way to assure no hassle in this whole process. What is the first semester like? What are the options of classes to pick from? How's the experience? We discussed classes already, but first semester. So semester system starts second year onwards. First year you have terms. Term you have yeah. four terms, two months each. Whereas second and third year you have two semesters, four months each. and uh, i think terms in your first year goes by really quick because each term is just 2 months so like ridiculous yeah your term starts and then a month into it you give midterms and then a month into it you give finals and then the next term starts 
whereas in your semester it's a bit chiller like obviously your semester like we just started our last sem last sem last sem yeah and then like i think around feb and march is when we'll probably give uh, after we come back from dip break is probably Mid-tooms. when we'll give midterms yeah. and then april end is when we'll give our finals and we're done yeah. so semester system is literally chiller Yeah. But at the same time, it's yeah, you're. Lot, it, I, I feel it's a lot of pressure at the end, and yeah. the least pressure at the start. It's the opposite for the tour system. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Fair enough, but yeah, I mean, your your first year goes by really quick with the mm-hmm. term system. You won't even realize it because you end up giving four midterms and four finals compared yeah. to second and third year where you give two midterms, two finals. <sighs> so it's really really quick. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it again. your coursework and your just balance of how many courses you are taking and what kind of courses you are taking makes the experience worth it when does college actually start uh, it starts august we started august wait uh, may it end it may june july august ha ah, august mm-hmm. august i remember the date also we came to campus august 14th this year right? correct so, correct the day before independence day yeah, correct correct came, correct uh, yes so our uh, ug3 year i yeah. was So again, arrival dates are different for batches. Like my sister's arrival date was seventh to ninth August. Our arrival date was fifteen, fourteen to sixteenth August. So usually August, just first two weeks of August is when the intake happens, and then well, college goes on until the end of April or May, early May, yeah, and then you much. let out for the summer. Tips just go well in your first year exam. Uh, It's so simple. Just study. It's not that hard. All, all, all. Secret hmm. tip: okay. Take a balance of courses you need to take for your major and the easiest courses you can ever. Oh, find. definitely. You like, need to have that need balance. You need to. Because really? over here, if you take an easy course and a hard course, like not hard actually, you can get medium-ish courses and easy courses. And the easy course will be so easy that you will just glide through, hmm. and the medium course will just get through. If it's a hard course, just deal with it. Yeah, and I would say tips to study. If you are asking, then honestly, your coursework, whatever your professor gives you, is your holy grail to getting through the course. Whatever yeah. they say goes is as simple as that. Um, I don't think you can. I mean, the best way to make sure that you cover everything is take your own notes in class. Yeah. That's really really helpful. Uh, and to study per se, I don't think we have tips to in like study tips per yeah. se, but. But if if you don't mind, mm-hmm. I have a very interesting tip. Another one, if you don't mind, mm-hmm. which is that so if you pay attention, then there are certain courses where you don't have to give a single test, a single final, or anything. It's just take-home assignments, group projects, and mm-hmm. final submissions. No yeah. exams, submissions. A lot of these courses exist. I have taken them. Most of my courses are yeah. like that. So if you want to get through without <laughs> the pressure of studying and giving exams, just take those. Okay, so that's the end. That's all the questions we're going to be answering for part. I think technically this is part three. Oh, and if you, st- oh. yeah, if so you. Some of the questions, people. Yeah, if you still have questions, then we're open in our DMs. Like a lot of you ended up texting Josh as well. So you can reach him. You can reach me and attach both our socials. And yeah, but that's essentially all the main questions that we've gotten about Flame so far. And we hope that this helps you out in some way or another. The last time we did this, we mentioned that if you ever catch us on campus, come say hi. And a lot of you a lot did. Of a lot of you came once this year. Like so yeah. many people stopped us together, and we got recognized for each other as well. Like people would see me and be like, "Oh, did you do a video with Josh?" And people would see him and be like, yeah. "Did you do a video with Rish?" So it's like she is local campus celebrity. Just for YouTube and just for UG one. <laughs> just saying, but yeah, if you end up at Flame, come say hi. We'd love to meet you guys. <laughs> And yeah thanks for watching the Thank so you YouTube so drill is like share comment subscribe and that's going to be it for this video see you next week see you oh.